Hi, everyone. My name is Martin Savesky, and I'm very excited to share with you our recent work on the structure of toxic conversations on Twitter. This is a joint work with my colleagues from MIT, Brandon Roy and Deb Roy. We have all witnessed how social media platforms have democratized public discussions. They have made it very easy for anyone to participate in conversations online. In the case of Twitter, anyone can post a tweet and any other user who sees it can reply. Others can reply to the reply and so on. This potential for large scale conversations can support a rich and vibrant public discourse, but oftentimes can also permit toxic behaviors. From recent surveys, we know that these kind of antisocial behaviors are very prevalent and can be damaging to the user's mental and emotional health. Past work in this area has generally focused on detecting and characterizing antisocial content, mostly in isolation and after the fact. And while useful in monitoring the levels of toxicity, these methods have limited potential in pre preventing toxic behaviors in the first place. Similarly, past work studying the structure of conversations has focused on characterizing and modeling the relationship between comments. But less attention has been paid on the relationship between the structure and toxicity in conversations online. And that gap is the focus of this work. Our study is motivated by the observation that communication is a social act and that the relationships between the conversation participants may influence their behaviors. We have two main research goals. First, to study the relationship between the structure and toxicity of the conversations after the conversations are over. And second, to build models that predict future toxicity based on the structure of the conversations as the conversations unfold. So let me make this a little bit more concrete and explain uh, how we represent the structure of the conversations. Here's a, here's a conversation prompted by a New York Times tweet. And one way to represent the structure of the conversation is by constructing a so-called reply tree where the root of the tree is the tweet that prompted the conversation and the descendant nodes are the replies. And the links capture which tweet is a reply to each other tweet. In practice, the reply trees look a lot like this. They're much wider and deeper. Um, and you will notice here that I've colored the nodes. The red nodes are tweets um, classified as toxic and the green nodes are tweets classified as non-toxic. We can also represent the conversation using a reply graph, which is a user-centric view of the reply tree, where one user is connected to another user if they reply to one of their tweets. Finally, we can construct a conversation follow graph, which captures the social relationships between the users. One user is connected to another user if they follow them on Twitter. So our goal is to study the relationship between the structural properties of these three objects and toxicity. To investigate this relationship systematically, we collected two large data sets. The first consists of conversations prompted by five major news outlets over the course of a year. And the second consists of conversations prompted by candidates who ran for office during the 2018 midterm elections over the course of five months. To make the exposition of the results a little bit easier, I'll focus on the news data set, uh, but we found very similar patterns across the two data sets. Finally, to classify the tweets as toxic versus non-toxic, we used the Google Perspective API, uh, which we thoroughly evaluated in our data. Now we can start thinking about our first goal of investigating the relationship between the structure and toxicity after the conversations are over. We analyze the data at three levels, individual level, diet level, and group level. We did many analyses at each level, but in the interest of time, I'll highlight only one result at the diet and one result at the group level. In the diet level analysis, we focused on the interactions between pairs of users. 
is in this example when Alex replied to Julie's post as part of a larger conversation. In particular, we're interested in how the probability of a toxic reply varies depending on first, whether the post is toxic or not, and second, the social relationship between the poster and the replier. Two users may not have any follow relationship. The poster may follow the replier, but not the other way around. The replier may follow the poster or they may have a mutual connection. As I mentioned, we measure the probability of a toxic reply um, as a function of these two diet characteristics. Um, so here's what we find. First, we find that toxic replies are much more likely to occur in the response to toxic posts. As you can see here, the bars on the left are larger than the bars on the right. Um, and second, we find that the probability of a toxic reply is the largest when the two users don't have any social connections. Among the remaining three edge types, the probability of a toxic reply is the highest when the relationship is, um, is asymmetric and the replier follows the poster, but not the other way around. Next, we'll zoom out and look at the conversation as a whole. We analyze how the density of the social connections between the conversation participants is related to the overall toxicity of the conversation. Here, the horizontal axis shows the follow graph density and the vertical axis shows the overall toxicity of the conversations, which we define here as the mean fraction of toxic tweets. What we find is that the density of, as the density of the connections among the participants increases, the overall toxicity of the conversation decreases. So there is a very clear negative relationship between the follow graph density and the overall toxicity of the conversation. Okay, so, so far we have seen that there is a significant association between certain structural characteristics of the conversation and toxicity. And next we'll test whether we can use these structural properties to forecast toxicity. We'll consider two prediction problems. First, whether the, conversa whether the conversation as a whole will become more or less toxic. And second, whether the next reply posted by a specific user will be toxic or not. Um, let's start with the first task of predicting future toxicity. And the motivation for this task is that if we're able to detect early signs of toxicity, then we can warn the user who started the conversation and we can encourage them to intervene. Alternatively, the platform may use these models as a signal to decide how prominently to display the, the conversation. We define the task as follows. Um, given the conversation so far, we're interested in predicting whether the conversation will become more toxic than expected. How do we know what is the expected toxicity? Well, we can divide the conversation into two parts, the prefix containing the replies so far, which I've highlighted here, and the suffix, which contains the replies that we have not observed yet. Then to determine the expected toxicity, we count the number of toxic tweets in the conversation prefix. In this case, 16 out of the first 50 tweets were toxic. And then we'll look at historical conversations that had the same number of toxic tweets in the prefix. And we'll see how toxic were those conversations after the initial 50 tweets. And our goal will be to predict whether the rest of this conversation will be more or less toxic than the median toxicity of the past conversations. So we have a binary prediction problem. Uh, where we try to predict whether the suffix toxicity is below or above the median toxicity in the historical data. To characterize the conversations, we use two sets of features. The first set captures the characteristics of the content. We compute a number of summary statistics of the toxicity scores returned by the perspective API. And the second set captures various aspects of the structure of the conversation prefix. We characterize the reply tree, we compute its depth, width, and many other features. We also characterize the structure of the reply and the follow graphs, including their density, centralization, various other features. 
And then we take these features and we plug them into classification models. We tested a wide, wide range of models and found that non-leader models uh, tend to work better. And in particular, the gradient boosted decision trees perform best. So the results that I'll show you next were obtained with these models. Now let's see how well we do. Here on the horizontal axis, I'm showing the size of the conversation prefix. That is how many tweets from the conversation we have observed so far. And on the vertical axis, I'm showing the accuracy. We have a balanced classification problem. So randomly guessing would give us an accuracy of 50%. If we use just the content features, we do significantly better than random with accuracy ranging between 56 and 58%. If we use only the structural features, we do even better with accuracy ranging between 59 and 62%. And finally, if we combine the two, we get even better performance by additional 2% accuracy. First, this suggests that the structural features are very informative, but also that the content and the structural features capture different but complementary aspects of the conversations. And that if we combine them together, we can predict future toxicity much better. Now let's move on to the second task. Um, and the motivation for this task is that although conversations on Twitter have a tree structure, they need to be displayed in a linear order. So we need to have some way of deciding how to rank individual conversation threads. So if we're able to predict how a user would respond to certain tweets, then we can sort the branches of the conversation tree such that they're least likely to post a toxic reply. We define the task as follows. If we know that a user I is about to join the conversation, we're interested in predicting whether they'll post a toxic reply. One challenge of making these individual level predictions is that some conversations may be inherently more likely to be toxic. For instance, if the root tweet is about a a uh, com uh, controversial topic. And to address this, we set up a paired prediction task. For each conversation, we sample a pair of one toxic and one non-toxic tweet. And then in each for each tweet, we take a snapshot of the conversation right at the point before the reply was posted. And as you can see here, the state of the conversation um, on the right is slightly different um, than the state of the conversation on the left. And our goal is to predict which one of these two replies will be toxic. Again, to make predictions, we use two sets of features. Um, we have features that are related to the content. We count the number of tweets, the number of toxic tweets so far, and whether the user posted um, any toxic tweets. And second, we use a set of structural features which characterize the relationship between the user and all other conversation participants, including characteristics of the user's relationship with the poster, uh, the position of the tweet in the reply tree, and the position of the user in the follow graph. As before, uh, we plug the features into a classification model and measure the classification performance on unseen data. Um, here, the horizontal axis shows the accuracy. We have a balanced classification problem. Uh, so if we just make random guesses, we'll have an accuracy of 0.5. If we use just the content features, we get an accuracy of 0.67. If we use just the structural features, we get a sim very similar accuracy of 0.68. And if we use both, we get a significantly higher accuracy of 0.71. This suggests that both the content and the structural features are predictive. As in the, and as in the previous task, they capture different but complementary uh, characteristics of the conversations. Most importantly, if we combine them, we can uh, make even more accurate predictions. Before I close, I would like to conclude by reiterating our two key findings. First, we found that many structural characteristics of online conversations are associated with toxicity. And second, we demonstrated that the structural features can be used to forecast toxicity 
both, both at the group and at the individual level. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to answering your questions.